Yo, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Coco Cora 34. I'm here today to do another episode of Prehistoric Subject Files, and today we're going to do Geosternbergia. And now, so let's get straight into it. Uh, Geosternbergia is a Pteranodontidae uh, pterosaur, which means it's actually really close related to Pteranodon, um, and I'll get into that later. Now, um, some estimates point it out at being around 7.52 meters with a wingspan, and uh, it lived in North America. Uh, from around 88 to 80.5 million years ago, that's the Conocanian to the Campion, uh, and it was first described in 70, uh, 1978, though it had been assigned to Pteranodon a lot earlier than that, and I'll get into that later. So basically, measurements on Geosternbergia differ. Um, some say that adults could have ranged from 3 to 6 metres, and there's obviously the, the uh, upper estimate of around 7.25 uh, meters in the wingspan, I meant to say, then. Uh, but additionally, basically, Geosternbergia was distinguished from Pteranodon for having a unique crest shape. The lower jaw of Geosternbergia has been estimated an average of 1.25 meters, which is quite large for a pterosaur, but obviously pterosaurs had huge heads compared to the rest of the body. Um, also, it's known from its uh, projecting frontals, which are the uh, skull bones on the top of the skull, which form an upright crest shape, and that was used pretty much for uh, basically sexually dimorphism, according to many sources. But actually what they found is that the crest size and shape can vary due to gender, age, species, or individual variation, as we've seen in other animals and other vertebrates. Now, Geosternbergia was sexually dimorphic, which meant the males and females differed. Now, Geosternbergia sternbergii, which is the oldest species, um, it had a large vertical crest that pointed uh, basically four sort of backwards, uh, upwards and backwards in the males, so male Geosternbergia sternbergia actually had larger crests, basically. Now, the younger species, which is known as Geosternbergia maesi, um, actually has something really weird going on. It has a shorter, more rounded crest in the males. So, what you'll actually find is that, um, according to this, the crest size would have actually reduced through it through the through basically the life st lifespan of this genus, which is really peculiar because generally in biology and generally in ecology and generally within a population of animals, big, bright, you know, big, bulky, bright, and just overall healthy-looking animals tend to attract the most uh, females. But the thing is that. A smaller crest wouldn't really do that, but for some reason this has actually occurred with uh, Geosternbergia. So it, apparently Geosternbergia sternbergii evolved into Geosternbergia maesi, and the crest actually reduced from being, you know, very large and very up, upright and very backwards pointing to being small and rounded, which is really unique. I've never seen that in uh, anything like this before. Now, Geosternbergia females actually differ from the males in that basically both females of both species actually have just smaller crests than the males. Um, I didn't find much on how the females differ from species, but uh, basically the females would have been, you know, smaller and they would have had smaller crests, you know, pretty much. And that's how you tell, tend to tell them apart from the males. Now, the history of Geosternbergia is really weird, so basically... Uh, the first material of Geosternbergia was collected in the lower portion of the Niobrara formation. I've butchered that, I'm really sorry. Um, and it was collected by George Sternberg in 1952. But then it wasn't described until 1966 by John Hawkinson. Um, and he actually found that this was actually older than Pteranodon, the genus, and he proposed it was actually a direct, ge uh, direct ancestor. And basically the fossils are known from... Niobrara and Sharrow Spring, uh, yeah, Sharrow Springs formations, basically. And uh, then later on, Kenneth Carpenter surveyed the uh, distribution of the basically Geosternbergia fossils, and he found that Geosternbergia uh, sternbergii actually from 88 to 85 million years ago, and Geosternbergia maesi actually lived from 81.5 to 80.5 million years ago, which is really weird because you've got that 5 million year gap between the two species, which possibly means that there might be an, you know, a transitional species between them, so there's a potentially a third species of Geosternbergia waiting out there. 
Now, when Jude Sternberger was first discovered, it was actually placed as a subgenus of Pteranodon uh, during some major studies in the 1990s. Uh, then, <coughs> AWA Kellner actually reviewed the uh, papers and reviewed the major studies in 2010 and actually suggested that Pteranodon Sternbergia, which is what Geo Sternberger was previously known as, was actually really distinct from Pteranodon and deserved its own genus name. So he actually referred to all the new, uh, he referred to all the specimens that he could uh, to Geo Sternbergia Sternbergii, and then he also referred to a new species, Geo Sternbergia maysi. Now, later on, Chris Bennett would actually consider Geo Sternbergia maysi as actually an adult male uh, Tridon longiceps, but I don't know much on the, um, the actual study of that and the actual relevance and whether it's actually been validated pretty much. Now, I'll go into some greater detail about the sexual dimorphism of Geo Sternberger. So, clearly there's two distinct morphs. There's a big morph and then there's a small morph. The big morph represents the male, the small morph represents the female. Now, what they've actually found is that regularly, the larger morph, the male, would actually be 1.5 times larger than the female, which is really interesting. And uh, Chris Bennett, he actually showed that there are actually four different sp uh, species, well, yeah, there weren't four different species like previously uh, established at one point in Geo Sternberger's history. I actually said that there's actually females and males of two separate species, but they're in the same genus. Now, what he found with uh, Geo Sternberger Sternbergii is that basically the male's crest actually points upwards and backwards, and sometimes it actually has a second long. Uh, low extension towards the tip of the beak, which is really strange. The small morph, however, has a more triangular crest and has more of a conical area, well, a canal area um, in the pelvic area. So it meant that the small morphs were actually the females because they had not not just um, from the smaller crest because they actually referenced that they actually, actually they didn't have to use that as the main distinction between males and females they actually said that the pelvic area the shape of the pelvic area the canal uh, area of the pelvic area was actually quite large in the smaller morphs therefore you could tell the females from the males and also the females from the young males because young males tend to actually look a lot like the f uh, the adult females and basically what they found is that the birthing canal space in the females was actually larger than in the males, obviously because the females had to give birth to small young, and apparently lots of them. <laughs> um, now what they've also found is that females on, uh, generally outnumber the males, and this possibly means that the males may have actually lived a polygenous uh polygenous uh, lifestyle, which basically means that there's, there's a lot, there's a few fewer amount of males than there are females and this actually uh, demonstrates the lifestyle of a seal and apparently what happens is that the males will actually compete for not one female but for groups of females so it's basically like the Geo Sternbergia males are actually acting as beach masters so they'll actually take a section of area and they'll actually basically take uh, as many females as they want so basically the algorithm for that is just basically a larger crest means more space, means more females, pretty much. And what they've also found is that possibly Geo Sternberger actually established rank, visual rank, by the size of the crest on the male. So actually, if there was a younger male coming along and he had a smaller crest than an older male, he'd stay away from the larger male and possibly not fight him, pretty much, for the harem as females. Um, and basically, the male Sternberger would have actually possibly not prey played a role in the young's lives so actually they would have mated with as many females as they could and then just moved on pretty much that's the life of Geo Sternberger male all right guys i uh, hope you all enjoyed this vi uh, this video hope you got some information from it i hope you uh, opened your eyes to uh, what i like to call the upgraded pteranodon uh, <laughs> so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i shall see you later bye bye